In these hectic days leading up to the great celebration of Christmas, we need to treat ourselves to a moment each day to see the signs that show the presence of the Lord in our lives here and now. We can be distracted by all sorts of necessary things to make preparation, but we need a bit of worship in each and every day leading up to the great feast. Otherwise, we'll miss out on what it is that is presented to us. It's the birth of the child Jesus, but more importantly, it's the coming of God into our world, into the world he created, into our flesh. It reminds us of our dignity. Sometimes we wake up with the burden of the world on our shoulders and realize that the Lord can help lift up that burden and that we may not think well of ourselves, but we should. We do an examination of conscience and we know with God's grace we can do better and live more fully. You can ask yourself how this day leading up to Christmas do you take Christ into the everyday moments of your life? When you're rushing about to go to the mall and you can't decide which Panera you want to go to, you can ask yourself how do I bring Christ into this experience of just picking up a cup of coffee, picking out gifts, shopping, preparing, decorating. How do we bring Christ out of this church into the lives of others? Now granted the coming week we will see the whole population of South Windsor try to fit into this church. And it's a nice experience because you see people that you know. I'll see my family again. But how do we bring Christ and not Christ's judgment down upon people? Think about it, it's very difficult, it makes us nervous. If we bring up religion at the dining room table, people stiffen up a little bit. And we get nervous about that. In the dream that Joseph had, in the life of finding that his bride-to-be was pregnant, Joseph is hesitant. But so is everyone that draws near to Christ. It makes you a little antsy. They're going to think I'm a holy roller. They're going to think I'm crazy. I'm not as secular as everyone else. I still go to church. I don't know how many times I've been asked, uh, do you still hear confessions? Do people still go to confession? So what do you think I do with my days? I never hear confession in the confessional. I hear it everywhere else. I heard one at the gas pump. I heard one on the town green. I heard it at West Farms Mall. I hear it in the parking lot a lot. I hear it in the hallway in the hospital. But it's a nice room to sit and relax in there for me. I usually bring a book. We will have a penance service tomorrow, so that's one of the preparations you can make. And it's not so much uh, come beat yourself up for an hour, but rather come prepare. Prepare yourself to receive the grace of Christmas. You see that God still trusts in you. God still trusts in us. And with the grace of the sacrament, we too can actually do the task at hand, which is to bring Christ into our everyday experience. And some people have said, oh, I believe in freedom of worship, which says, whatever you do in that building, that's okay. No, it's freedom of religion in our country. That means you can take your beliefs out into the public square and witness by how we live and witness by your joy that what matters is Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, that's politically incorrect. Too bad. Too bad. There's wonderful ways where we see our faith pop up in the community. Yesterday they had wreaths across America, and last year they said, oh, would you please come and say a prayer for us, Father? Sure, fine. So I showed up in the middle of that storm, had a personal drive over in his four-wheel drive truck, and it was marvelous. It was wonderful. We began and concluded that ceremony with prayer to remember those that served the nation. We went to South Windsor High School and they had a, a, a holiday a music festival. It was great. Those children are superb. And it's probably the children and grandchildren of the choir were also pretty good. Thank you very much. They keep rotating through the masses. Maybe if you want to join, you can have an audition, just like the Bee Gees. 
you look around, you see the decorations and those wreaths that are placed on the headstones of our veterans are symbolic of the victory of Christ over death. A wreath is a religious symbol. A Christmas tree is a religious symbol. At University of Hartford one time, they tried to put up a holiday tree and they held up signs, the Catholic students and the Jewish students, I wonder what holiday they're referring to. On the holiday tree, they hung up a menorah and a Buddha. And they were probably, what are you doing? You're mixing things, syncretism, you're sticking it all together and coming up with this, what? Bouillabaisse, mess. Know who you are, be able to explain who you are, and know that people need to know that because they want the good news. They're not getting it on any of the cable networks or even Netflix. They're only going to get it from you. So I invite you, well, tomorrow evening here, there's lots of strange priests to come that'll never see you again. Confess your sins. I went to confession last week, although it's kind of running out, the grace, I think. I should go again, maybe, maybe. But I, you have to make preparation. Yesterday, one of the parishioners came over, and she too, like our parish dog, has a golden doodle. Cute. And I think the dog is in love. The only problem, this is an older dog. And I told him, I said, Bennett, she's an older woman, be careful. <laughs> They put it on uh, Facebook, pictures of playing in the snow, playing in the snow, and uh, the yard used to look like courier and eyes. Now it looks, well, it looks like a junkyard. They destroyed everything, but it was wonderful. You watch people come to church with what they love and care about, and when they bring it out to the community, the community is better. This town of South Windsor is better because of all of you because you witness to Jesus Christ and that's what people want. They want the meaning of life lived in your life.